And the topic that we really wanted to dive into you is the topic of like, how do we retain the younger generation? And I think Absolutely. that it's yeah, something like my that, generation. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> back when they, with the big bicycles, with the giant uh -huh. front tire, tiny little. I had the I, first I, cell phone that you could. I, 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 I will say, say <laughs> so I'm going to take a wild guess that you're a Gen Xer and you're not wrong because your generation is in a really cool position. I'm an older millennial, an elder millennial, I'm 40 now, which is really weird because I've been speaking about kids in insurance basically for so long that I'm now 40 and, and the industry is still only halfway getting it, right? But I talk to a lot of Gen Xers and chat with Tony and I tell them this is your time because the boomers are finally retiring. Like for real, this is it. It's no longer a drill. We've a been lot talking of them about are just dying. Years. The older boomers have either retired or died. Yeah. In the case of, of insurance agents, usually at the desk because they never retire basically. So the Gen Xers are finally taking over and you guys are a small generation, 20 million people less than the boomers. Well, we're exclusive. Yes, it's an exclusive club. And uh -huh. while you will never have the, the numbers, you are inheriting the leadership roles, both carrier and broker side. Now you're gonna have to work with the millennials, which are a very large generation, but this is your time to shine. Be picky about your next job. Be picky about which agency you're gonna go work for next or which agency you're gonna buy next because you have the experience that my generation doesn't have, especially because a lot of my generation grew up in the freaking call center, whether carrier yeah. side or broker side. We just don't have the experience. While well, you guys started in the industry while the training programs were still fantastic and you learned from the boomers and now that they're retiring you've got 15 20 years of experience this is your industry to run now don't let us down so do you realize that craig is a boomer are you really what a, no <laughs> my parents are okay yeah there, there's there's no way i was gonna say you have to be like yeah. incredibly young looking for i think the youngest boomer is now what like 53 54 something like that yeah i'd be younger than that barely Barely. <laughs> Barely. <laughs> Big 5-0. So I'm curious why there's this perception that the millennials could be kind of entitled and maybe whiny. We, we are. Soft, maybe. But yes. and, and this isn't my opinion. This is just an mm -hmm. opinion I've heard. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, no, no. I spent a lot of time researching this issue because yeah. it's definitely that perception. Basically, there, there's some really cool research that goes back hundreds of years, which has found that generations that grew up during times of abundance, grow up slower, get married later, leave home later, right? oh. settle down later. And the millennials, we grew up in the mid 80s and the 90s, a time of historic abundance in the States. And we were unprecedented raised- Unprecedented tech, right? Unprecedented technology. Unprecedented technology and unprecedented abundance. Right? Yeah. Uh, it's, it's the economy, stupid, right? So the <laughs> our parents are boomers. And boomers had a really unique parenting philosophy, which was, I want you to have it better than I did. And they had the money also. So basically, they spoiled us. And, mm. and then we came out into the working world and we go and become the most educated generation ever, also the most indebted generation for that education. Also, the boomers fault who stopped investing in education. But anyway, we graduate <laughs> and it turns out life's not as easy as our, as our parents made it look, right? Mm. So we're and, just so good at it. <laughs> right? Uh, so, so basically, yes. We, we are a little spoiled and, and we are growing up slower. And by the way, it's really hilarious that, that I continue getting paid speaking gigs to talk about millennials and insurance and now Gen Sears. We're freaking 40 years old, right? Like I'm 40 yeah. and a half. The oldest millennials about 42, depending on which demographer, you, you know, the, the years are a little bit fuzzy. Interestingly, we have grown up, but we've grown up in very different ways from our parents. We ended up having less kids. We ended up getting married later. We ended up settling down later. We just look at life differently. Also, we are a mission-driven generation because our mm. parents were workaholics. Our dads especially were workaholics. And they told us, don't do what I did. Follow your dreams, which is horrible career advice, by the way. Right? <laughs> <laughs> that is the worst. I don't know. I would argue the opposite. I think that that's great advice because so, if you don't do what you love. Yes, 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 yes. The problem is at 15, you have no idea what you will what oh, yeah. you will love. When I graduated college at 24, I had no idea what I was gonna love. I grew up thinking I was gonna work in computer science. Well, it turns out if you can't do math, you'll never finish college. Right, <laughs> right. right. So, so, true. And, and that's a lesson that I learned the hard way little by little. But but anyway, I graduated with a business degree, ended up working as a transportation fleet manager, got down since in 09. I still hadn't found what I loved. And then I fall yeah. into insurance. Farm Bureau of Iowa does a fantastic job in, in training me. And I fall in love with insurance. And it's now going on, I don't know, 13 or 14 years since then. I could not have possibly known that, right? So I, I've had people ask me, Tony, if you could go back to, you know, 18 year old Tony and share wisdom, what would you share? 
And what I want to say is study risk management and insurance. But here's the funny thing. If I did that and Tony listened to me, which he wouldn't, but if he listened to me, <laughs> he would have ended up going to a different university because Iowa State University, where I got both my, my bachelor's and my MBA, doesn't have an insurance program. And so that would have changed my entire life right there. And number two, this alternate Tony would have graduated from Temple or from St. Joe's or from Florida State or Eastern Kentucky University or one of the other major of my programs. Or University of Arizona. Perfect. There's not that many of them, right? And <laughs> would have started his or her, his career either in an underwriting training program or in a broker training program, would have skipped everything that I lived in the call center, everything that I lived in entry-level claims, and would have never seen that horrible story off that happens in those call centers, right? Right, And thus, insurance nurse would have never been born, right? I would be a right. boring corporate executive today <laughs> uh, instead of this beautiful life that I lead. So, so anyway, I don't even know how we got to this topic, but, but go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say, like, I the reason why I don't like the do what you love concept is because it's more of like find what you love and if you look at it it's like the ultimate funnel okay. right it's just like if you want sales you need a lot of leads to find the sales the people that actually want your product and it's the same thing it's like you got to get a lot of experience to find out what you do and don't like and to acquire a bunch of skills because if i would have known this like when i was younger i would have done more jobs that i liked realizing, hey, I'm acquiring skills like that, they'll add up, right? They they compound over time, they add up. And and the things I learned in Starbucks, like I'm using today in, in business. And it's like, it wasn't just making coffee. You know what I mean? It was yep. the, the advice should should be try a lot of things early on. Yeah. Focus on the things that match your strengths. If you do something you're good at, you'll enjoy it and you'll get good at it. And then once you choose something, dig in, like jump in with both feet and become yeah. a giant nerd on it. And then you won't work at the, like, I'm a great example. I, I haven't worked a day in the last like five years because I, right. because my last two roles have been perfect fits for me. But yeah. I was don't slow down. by the time I knew enough to find those jobs, right? Yeah. At, at 20 yeah. or 25, I had no chance of getting it right.